Rioters are not protesters, and protesters are not rioters. The situation in Portland has still not been resolved, and now hearings about the situation have evolved into the Senate. This Senate hearing was extremely useful because it answered a number of questions that couldn't be previously answered. This time the Democrats did not base their arguments on the protest being entirely peaceful, but instead have made arguments that the police force were the ones instigating the violence and have been acting out of line. What we've seen in Portland are peaceful protesters in need of protection from federal officers. Secret police tactics. Heavily armed secret police. Secret police. Secret police. Secret police forces. Secret police tactics. Secret police. Secret police tactics against peaceful Black Lives Matter protesters. Unidentifiable federal agents. Unidentifiable federal paramilitary forces. Secret police paramilitary style attacks on citizens. The forces have no agency marking. The federal forces would storm out of the federal building and attack the peaceful demonstration. Officers with no identity attacking protesters. Unidentified federal forces grab peaceful protesters off the street and force them into unmarked vans. So the accusations are as follows. The Department of Homeland Security has been operating secret police. The officers they've deployed have been unidentifiable. They have been attacking peaceful protesters and are using unmarked vans. The Democratic senators decided to play a video to illustrate this point. On July 11th, protester Donovan Labella was at the federal courthouse when an officer appears to have fired at his head in retaliation for tossing a spent tear gas canister. Yeah, yeah. On July 18th, a Navy veteran was batoned and pepper sprayed in another unprovoked attack. His right hand was broken and he needs surgery. On July 15th, several federal officers were filmed driving in unmarked vehicles in the blocks around the courthouse. How are we supposed to know who you are? How are we supposed to know you're not kidnapping us and you're civilians kidnapping us? Federal officers wouldn't identify themselves. Use your words! But patches on the right and left sides of their uniforms match those used by members of BORTAC, the tactical unit from Customs and Border Protection. It drove the protester away in an unmarked car. Thank you, Senator Hirono. I will note at the end of that video that is narrated, it says, describes law enforcement officers as unidentified while the video shows them with the words police in bright yellow all caps across their chest. I'd like to show you what real secret police look like. This footage shows secret police with no identifying signatures or any symbols arresting a man at a protest in Czechoslovakia. The footage itself was taken by a fellow officer filming secretly. This is obviously in stark contrast to officers with the words police on their back and front and signatures of which department they belong to on both sides. How exactly is someone with giant all caps police across their, their chest? How, how are they secret police? What am, what am I missing? You continually hear people who know that what they're saying is not true about these officers repeat it. Even in the introductory video, these are unidentified and conveniently enough, um, the narrator identified the location on those officers' uniforms where you can see who they work for, which agency even within the Department of Homeland Security. That particular individual can be identified by what amounts to a badge number on their person that is displayed for the public to see. As for the question of using rented unmarked vans, the representative from Homeland Security explains this is because marked cars with officers inside are being set alight. They're also focusing on unmarked cars. Now, to the best of my knowledge, every law enforcement agency of any size or scope uses unmarked vehicles. Is there any reason why, why law enforcement might want to use unmarked vehicles in an active riot? Well, in other active riots around the country, we've seen those marked vehicles targeted, as I said, with officers in them. Uh, we have attempted and, and firebomb, literally firebomb. lit on fire. Yes, quite intentionally. That's exactly right. There have also been questions about the uniforms the officers are wearing, the fact that they're wearing camouflage. The reason for this is because of the unwillingness to supply state officers. They had to call in federal officers from as far as the U.S.-Mexico border. What purpose did it serve for DHS to use military camouflage in a crowd control, a crowd control setting? So, Senator, that wasn't chosen because there was a crowds control setting. That was CBP officers whose normal duty stations are along the border, and they came with what they had. They have police on front and back. 
the universal declaration of law enforcement mm. and the specific agencies are identified on each of their shoulders along with an individual identifier Every but not their name because they've been being doxxed. The next argument the Democratic senators made was the same one they made previously, that the federal officers being present was the cause of the violence and therefore needed to be removed. Subsequently, a deal has been negotiated in which federal officers will be removed and replaced with state officers. Some think the Department of Homeland Security wanted all along. State and local officials in Oregon have demanded that federal forces leave Portland because they have brought violence, not peace. Violent conflict in Portland was down before Donald Trump got involved. In the days since federal forces backed off, the chaos has largely stopped in Portland. After national coverage of these tactics, President Trump retreated, withdrawing his federal agents from Portland. The protests since have been peaceful celebrations focused on the message of the BLM movement. However, even though the federal officers have been removed, rioting has continued. Since the arrangement was made, he didn't characterize it this way with Governor Brown, to finally bring in state law enforcement to do what Portland wouldn't do, and that's police many of the streets of Portland, that things have been rosy. Well, last night, the local police declared a riot. Last night. With regards to instances of police brutality, Everyone agrees that any officer acting out of line ought to face the full force of the law and their victims compensated. No such justice will be available to those harmed by the protesters. If we had done nothing, what would have happened to the courthouse, Mr. Cuccinelli, in Portland? That courthouse wouldn't be there in any function. So I challenge anybody on the other side to say different. If we hadn't intervened, they'd burn the goddamn thing down. 